Welcome back, guys. Today we're doing a video on the Batman live-action films that have came out in the past. Um, we're not doing the Adam West one because uh, it was kind of a spinoff of the show. So we are just doing, um, we're doing nine films uh, that includes the Nolan trilogy, the Batman films of the 90s, and BBS and Justice League. So we're ranking those um, in order of what we think is best. Um, start things off. We're going to start with number nine being the worst live action version of Batman. And that goes uh, to Batman and Robin. Uh, this film is just horrendous. It's pretty much unwatchable. Some people will tell you that it is watchable because it's so bad that it's enjoyable. Uh, I can't do it. It's just it's painful. For some reason, I think I did kind of enjoy it as a kid. But, but you know, I had the bike. I had like a little bike. My first bike uh, was Batman and Robin. Uh, that's probably why I can't ride a bike now. Um, yeah, it, that movie is just trash. You got some good, uh, you know, casting choices in there with Arnold. Well, not good casting choices. You have a good cast with Arnold and Uma Thurman and George Clooney, but n none of them really fit their characters. Uma Thurman maybe, but Arnold. I don't know why you would ever pick him to play Mister Freeze in the first place. Uh, and then you got these terrible lines coming from him. Um, the whole movie in general was made to sell toys, and they've admitted that. You got the bat nipples. Um, you have Batgirl in there, but she's not really Barbara Gordon. She's like Alfred's niece or granddaughter or something. Uh, it's just a terrible, terrible film. Uh, you also have Bane in this movie, which I think a lot of people forget, and he just kind of grunts and uh, makes noises. Oh, I don't know. Uh, this is the, also the film that has the um, the bat credit card which we were just discussing before we started rolling here. It's amazing. Uh, and uh, it says expiration, expiration date. Um, what, it says never or like something like that. I, I can't remember now, but yeah, it's this. Is, and they, they all, we all, they also have the, um, the ice skates in this one, the bat skates. Oh uh, my God. Yeah. It, it's almost like they were trying, I guess they were trying to go back to like the sixties era with this film, but you know, this was the fourth, this was technically the fourth Batman film in a franchise that definitely didn't have this tone to begin with. Um, yeah, just awful film. And it almost, you know, killed, uh, the legacy of the Batman character on film. Uh, that was in, was it 90, 97, 1997. And we didn't get the next Batman film until 2005 when no one came and, re-envisioned to batman um so then we're going to go on to well actually what is your number nine is what uh out of the rankings i am right with you on that um, okay I, I like the batman card just because like it's something funnier to pick at like you pick front of uh man th bane i, I like remember when he was planting these bombs he was just going like what uh, yeah uh, i'm just like Bro, this is like, this is like a Sesame Street got like millions of dollars to produce something, but they just ran out of money for a voice. I can't believe this was like a theatrically released film. It it's so so bad. Um, the yeah, next I now, gave, the nipples, like they thought people were gonna get hard seeing this movie. Nah, my nipples didn't get well, hard. Like the, my the nipples did originate down. in this film. It originated in a different one. I'm pretty sure, but and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but we're now we're going on to number eight, which on my list is Justice League. Um, and that's just, you know, it's not a Batman film. It's a Justice League film, but I'm included in this list because he is a major character in the film. This movie is awful. I know we haven't got to that yet on our DC rewatch series, but we're going to dive into that when we get to it. Um, you know, you take this very cool dark version of Batman that was created in Batman versus Superman. And we instead, which it's the same character, but there's like a lot of lights on him. It's Batman in the daytime, which doesn't really work. It's, he doesn't have much to do in the film, despite being a major character. Uh, yeah. I don't want to talk too much about the movie because we're going to do a video on it later, but it's, 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 it's awful. All right. All right. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to pick up for my nipples. Not my nipples, but Batman's nipples. My nipples are hairy. Uh, but pick up from the back. I don't know, man. Like, 
those nipples, like, it, it scars me as a child, man. Like, are you Warner, going to Batman Forever? Is that your number eight? Yeah. Okay. Like Warner well, Brothers. Well, I mentioned too, then that's my number seven. So we'll we gonna we'll talk about that. Warner Brothers always took compensation money for like, tor- like torturing me during that time. Because like, man, dude, like, those nipples were really well detailed. <laughs> like I give them that. Uh, whoever designed the costumes, I give them props for that. But Jesus, man, they they literally like. They went all out into this. Like all that was missing was just tiny little bat hair on them. Well, we didn't get the we didn't get the next bat film after Batman and Robin. You know, we don't know what could have been on that suit. Well, all right, you turn. Uh, yeah, my number seven is Batman Forever. Um, with you know George Clooney is, does not play Batman in this one. Uh, this was the first time we had a Batman uh, casting change in that old series. Uh, it went from Michael Keaton, who played Batman in the first two films, to Val Kilmer, who I think Val Kilmer was the worst Bruce Wayne that we've ever had. I don't think he's the worst Batman. The worst Batman we've ever had is George Clooney, uh, as far as these films here. Uh, but still, not a good Batman. Uh, not an enjoyable film, although better than Batman and Robin. Because uh, you got Jim Carrey in here and Tommy Lee Jones. I like both of them, but Tommy Lee Jones, I don't know what he's doing. Doing, I don't know why he was ever chosen to play Two-Face and Harvey Dent. Not to mention, Billy Dee Williams played the same character in this franchise two movies ago, and now I guess he's white. Uh, I don't know who, I don't know if Tommy Lee Jones knew anything about Two-Face, or if Joel Schumacher knew anything about Two-Face, but they kept playing the character as if he was the Joker. Uh, Jim Carrey was a great choice to play the Riddler. Uh, it just, unfortunately... I don't know what was happening in the film. You also got Nicole Kidman in there. Um, might have been the best part of the movie. I don't know. But that's my number seven. All right. Uh, my number seven will be Justice League. I'm going to do my best not to go too much into it since we're already uh, going to do something about it soon. But, yeah, I'm right with you. He was, he was just there. He was just that that one kid that, like, he didn't do any like any work, but he still got a good grade out of it. Not the movie, but like you know, but and also like they kind of changed. Like, remember how he was like, oh, he was serious like in Batman versus Superman. Yeah. He, he went really soft after that. It's just kind of like it's just a cons- his consistency of it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm um, going on to number six for me, and this is going to surprise probably a lot of people uh, as far as their list goes, but for me, it's Batman Returns. Um, a lot of people like really praise this film, uh, it being darker than the original and being one of the best, I guess, live-action Batman films. I don't think it is. I think it's it's okay. It's not bad. I did give it a like when I rewatched it uh, not too long ago, but it, it wasn't as good as I had remembered uh, the penguin is awful in this film. I don't. I know some people liked the Danny DeVito version. It was not for me. Didn't fit with the penguin that I like from the comics. Uh, just not good. Weird. Uh, which that's what Tim Burton was going for. That's what he always goes for. But it's just it didn't work for me. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer was the standout of this film. It was the best part. Um, I would have actually liked to seen them do the spinoff with her character, which they had thought about doing. Uh, or bringing her character back in the third film if Tim Burton had came back and, and actually did the third film, which would have been called Batman and Continues. Um, but yeah, like Michael Keaton really has nothing to do in this film either. It's it's truly, it has Batman in it. It's called Batman Returns, but it's really a Catwoman and Penguin film. Um, he's just there. He doesn't have any really storyline other than just showing up and being Batman. And Bruce Wayne is just like pushed to the side with like nothing to do it's it's annoying yeah uh all right my uh next one will be batman versus superman dawn of justice that's what my dad said i'm just kidding um no like it's still an enjoyable film in some way like don't get me wrong but it's just like 
I, I think I'm just a bit more salty just because of, like, the consistency, inconsistency of the universe, you know? Yeah. But, like, I mean, I like Ben Affleck as uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman. Uh, especially his, like, fighting sequence and all that. Probably like, the most fluent thing we can get, like, on live action when it comes to him. Well, yet. Uh, but, I don't know, like, like, it's just something about it. Like, I don't know. Like, it's probably just because, like, we just got Batman straight out the, straight out the boom. Like, boom. Like, here he is just for that universe. Like, we know his story and stuff, but we just kind of, like, we don't know that Batman specifically for that story, which we have to, like, make, like, connect puzzles and all, and come up with stories in the back out of our heads and stuff. So it's just, like, all right, like, you said what kind of Batman we're getting, but we just don't have, like, nothing more to, like, all right, like, like, obviously his parents died and all that, but we kind of want to know what, what he did and watch him grow, like, as his well, character development. So it's just kind of like that, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my number five is the 1980 version of uh, Batman, uh, Tim Burton's first film uh, with Batman, uh, Michael Keaton as the character. Um, you got Jack Nicholson as the Joker, this was a huge film in terms of, of comic book films um, and doing something different so that could be taken more seriously, uh, which, you know, continues to evolve through history, you know, like, and Batman does a good job of doing that when we get to the Dark Knight trilogy. But and I do, I give it a 3.5 rating, which means good. I do think it is good, but there's parts of it I don't, don't think holds up as much. Um, I did like Jack Nicholson as Joker. Um, is he the best Joker? Is he one of the best? No. Um, but he was the first, like, very, I guess, like, serious version of the Joker that we saw on screen, like, modern day. Um, I did like the uh, the Prince song and the dance in the art museum. I thought that was fun. Uh, but, yeah, could have been better. But, you know, given how important it is, it comes in at number five for me. All right, all right. My next one will be Batman Returns, the one with DeVito, Pfeiffer, and you know. Uh, I still enjoy it. I, you're right. He was he wasn't given anything to work really work with, to be honest. But for me, it was just just because like Penguin and Catwoman were like the highlight of it. Yeah. And plus, like I really like like I always liked the score from those movies. The score is incredible. I forgot to mention yeah, that. that. That's, that's Danny Elfman. Thing. Uh, did the score for Batman and Batman Returns, and they, it's absolutely incredible. And he also did the score for Spider-Man, uh, the Sam Raimi trilogy, which I love. Uh, I want to say he's coming back to do something something else, but I, I'm not sure what it is. But he he's a great composer. The, the sad thing is, he, though, he composed uh, Justice League, and it was very lackluster. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, he was just like, they don't give a shit, so I'm not going to give a shit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting paid. All right, and then we go to my number four, which you just previously talked about, and that's Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Um, I do give it a three and a half. I think it is good. It has a lot of problems, but I do think it's good. I enjoy it. Um, but most importantly, what I like about it is Ben Affleck's version of Batman. I, I said when it came out that he was the best version of Batman that we've ever had. I don't agree with that anymore. I do think it is Christian Bale. But if we had gotten more of Ben Affleck as Batman and we had got his all trilogy, I do think he would have been the best Batman that we would have had. Um, Cause I loved his performance and what he did in Batman versus Superman. We just didn't get enough of him for me to give him that, you know, uh, recognition because he really only got, he was a supporting I guess you could say he was the lead. I guess he was more of a, even the lead of, than Superman in Batman vs. Superman. But, you know, it got bad in Justice League, and then he's out. So he really didn't get that much of him. So, yeah. All right. Uh, number cuatro will be Batman, you know, the one with uh, Jack Nicholson, back, uh, Michael Keaton. Uh I mean, that's like the first of its kind, so that's just kind of like, without that movie, we wouldn't have what we have right now, like from Marvel and some of the DC stuff, and like, and probably the risk of Logan and Deadpool, 
successful risk. But man, yeah, like again, like the score, Jack Nicholson's performance. Um, for some reason, for some reason, I just like the whole entire vibe that they did to it with that movie. And yeah, like I don't know, it's just oh, God damn it, man, it's just that that score, man. It's just that score. Especially how Michael Keenan's neck is all like this. He's just like, I got yeah. Which is okay. Then we go to my number three, which is Batman Begins, and in that film, Batman is sort of he's restrained too with the neck thing. Uh, it's not until later films where he actually is able to move around. Um, so, he, but he's, I guess he would. He's maybe not as restrained as Michael Keaton was, but he's still pretty uh, restrained with that costume. But yeah, Batman Begin, uh, Begins is my number three. Uh, it did, doesn't get enough credit for being how important it is, I think, um, in terms of modern day comic book films, because most people would credit that to The Dark Knight, um, which, if I had to give, well, 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 we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, Batman Begins is very important because it came out in 2005, um, and it came out in a time where you know, the best films we had gotten, superhero, superhero films at that point, was Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. But a lot of other stuff was happening, too, with Fantastic Four. Uh, you know, all of these different... The Hulk, Daredevil, all this, these different comic films that were coming out that were live action. But they weren't necessarily as dark or realistic as Batman Begins, which gave... You know, we had to get Batman Begins for us to get The Dark Knight. And I feel like a lot of people in The Dark Knight came out didn't even realize that it was a sequel to Batman Begins. Because um, I remember like, it being in middle school at the time and people talking about it. And I was like, you know, well, did you like Batman Begins? And they were like, what? What's, what's that? So or maybe it was just an age thing. But yeah, I, thought, I think it was really good. Uh, underrated, I think, uh, in terms of the trilogy. But I mean, it is, in my opinion, my least favorite out of the trilogy. A lot of people think it's, uh, do, do say it's better than Dark Knight Rises, but... We got Ra's al Ghul in there, too, playing by Liam Neeson, which was great. And, uh, yeah, that's my number three. All right. My number three will be The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, you bastard. All right, I guess I'm a two-time bastard today. <laughs> no, but seriously, though, um, I don't know. It's really hard for me to rank that up. Uh, Trilogy is always just like they're all masterpieces in general, but like the attitudes, screw it. Dark Knight Rises number three. Uh, Heinz Zimmer with the score is fantastic. Uh, Tom Hardy's performance as Bane. Well, just the cast in general was really well done. Well, really well performed. Uh, like, you know, like that ending and stuff, you know, he takes that bomb and stuff. And then like the score is like, dun, dun, dun. it's like, oh shit, all right, like, ooh, my hair's standing up. And and also like the motivational stuff, you can probably like you can probably catch on to some like inspirational videos and stuff. So, um, yeah. So I just, I just want to mention that too. Like Christian Bale as Batman was fantastic. Like I said, I do think he is the best Batman that we've had, and it's going to be very hard to beat him because uh, he's such an incredible actor and in what he brought to Bruce Wayne and Batman. Uh, but my number two is The Dark Knight Rises, uh, which I I think. The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises are both perfect films to me. Um, I, I, I gave them a rating of a five apiece. Uh, I, I don't care. People talk about the plot holes in the film and, you know, whatever. I, I love Bane's voice in it. I thought it was great. Um, Batman Begins, I give it a four and a half. I think it's excellent, but it's a little bit less. But yeah, The Dark Knight Rises, like, uh, both of, of that, of Dark Knight Rises and The Dark Knight have two of the best and this is a list I don't want to do down, down the line, uh, movie openings of all time. And The Dark Knight, you know, obviously it starts off with uh, the plane crash and Bane and, and, and showing us Bane. And I thought that was such a great way to start a film, not only because of the stunt and just like it being incredible, but and he did this with both of these films, introduced us to the film's villain in the opening scene and then cut to Batman later. I thought it was a great way to, to do it and... Um, I would like to see kind of, I think that's a good way to do comic book film, honestly, but, um, uh, yeah, got a great cast. I thought Tom Hardy was great as Bane, uh, Anna Hathaway was great as Catwoman. And just, I loved the conclusion of it. And 
the emotional journey that we went through, not only in this film, but in the course of the trilogy. And then we get to our number one, our final film. And I think obviously that's the same for both of us. That's the dark Knight, uh, which in my opinion to this day is still the greatest, uh, comic book film of all time. It's going to be very hard to ever top it. Um, but you know, maybe we will one day, uh, there's other films that have, came sort of close that also are five stars. You know, The Dark Knight Rises for me, Avengers Endgame, Infinity War, Logan. Um, but The Dark Knight is so revolutionary. Uh, I feel like 2008 was the kickoff of the modern day comic book age. Because you not only had The Dark Knight Rises, but you also had Iron Man, which kicked off the MCU. So both of those films came out in 2008, close together, and it was really the change of comic book movies moving forward. You had Heath Ledger's The Joker, which was incredible. Still the best version of The Joker that we've ever had. Um, fantastic performance. He got an Oscar for it. And also, I think at that point, we started changing. We've had some, we had some good villains, comic book villains in the past. I thought Willem Dafoe was uh, pretty great as Green Goblin, but he didn't have uh, as much, much depth as he could have had. Um, Joker was the star of the change of comic book villains moving forward too, and giving us uh, a greater villain in terms of the film. Like, you know, Joker, uh, then we got Bane in the next film, you know, today we have Thanos. So, yeah. And it was just, it's, it's a great film in general. It's not just a great comic book film. Um, you, you could watch this film and not even think about comics and just think about the terms of the film and how it was made. It should have won best picture in 2000 for 2008. Uh, it was the reason they changed the nominees at the time from five to ten. So, Bill? Uh, I mean, I think it was like the first comic book movie to break a billion dollars in the box office, if I'm correct. I'm not sure. I'm not a big box office person. We could start looking into that kind of thing, though. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah man. Like, to me, like, it, well, it has the better intro of a movie like with the joker and the bank um right that yeah and also had like a good like i guess you could say like a good like social commentary like in today's society like not all the way but like it had a good idea um obviously Heath Ledger's performance um probably won't be topped in our lifetime no. probably the next Obviously. yeah but i mean that it will be top someday it will be top someday but probably not our lifetime or probably I don't know. It's going to take like next a lot of commitment for the next person. Uh, man, I don't know. Like it just, man, it's just like the movie is perfect, and it can probably be one of like, like probably like you know like in the next, the next century, or the next like hundred years and stuff. People are just going to recognize it as like as one of the best movies of like of all time. This, yeah. Which, it, like, people are not going to look at it as a comic book film. They're going to look at it as, like, it's just a great film overall. And, like, and obviously, like, I'm pretty sure there's been, like, a lot of, like, film students that don't, like, dozens of, of reports on this movie. Even, like, on people that don't even give a shit about comic book films. Like, it's, it's just, like, like, it's just perfection. And it should have got nominated. At least, it should at least got nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, but, it's it's crazy to think that it yeah. didn't. And like, and it's just, man, it's just the movie's just like, it's, it's it's fucking perfect. Like for me, it's like if like with, with that kind of tone, for me it would be like the Dark Knight and Logan. Yeah, um, we'll do a separate list another time too, ranking comic book films. Uh, yeah, but man, so. I don't know. It's just, but it's up there. It's it's my it's my I think it's the best. You know, you also got in towards my top, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of the original Spider-Man. So it's up there, too, as well as Logan, uh, Endgame, Infinity War, all of that. So, yeah. Yeah, man, it's just, I don't know, like, I feel like it has a good, good blueprint to make, like, a good blueprint or a good step-by-step -step to make, like, a movie with, like, super deep, like, depth. But you guys, you just got to pick the right character, the right villain, and the right story. 
but man, like, I don't know, like, that can be top, yeah, like, anything can be top. There's always going to be, like, the best villain, the best the best villain, the best commentator, the best director of all time, but it, it, it's always going to be top by the next. Yeah. But, yeah, like, but I, I hope to, like, at least be alive for that when that day comes, like, that we get the next great comic book movie. That's not just like uh, like in Marcus Corsese's words, a theme rock, a theme park, which I still enjoy the hell out of them. But what I mean by that, like someone that's like you know like super, not dark, but really well into like more depth. Right. So you I mean really do hope. Aquaman didn't make you feel that way? I don't know, man. I think that got snuffed for Best Picture too, so I don't know. All right, that's our uh, ranking of the live action Batman films and. Ah. We'll see you guys next time.